James, I asked you the same question yesterday, um, but I know you said you leave the weight cut to lightweight to the last minute. How much better are you feeling today than you would be if you were cutting down to 155? Uh, uh, better. I mean, uh, weight cuts always suck, but um, better. I, got, I don't have a lot to go left. You know, I have about eight pounds left. For me, that's pretty easily easy. I can cut that in one time if I need to. Yeah, so is, were you doing, like, similar walking around weight, like, just throughout camp and stuff as you would have been? It's just not you're doing, like, the major cut at the end? Well, I always cheat on my diet. That's why I always know if I wanted to, I could go back to lightweight because I, I, I made weight every time, never missed weight one time in 13 cuts, and I always cheated. But this time I didn't even start my diet till realistically about two weeks ago. Like, I, was in, I did a big portion of my camp in Thailand, and I was over there eating all types of food and just doing whatever. Yeah, what, I know you said you had a friend over in Thailand, and that's kind of how you connected, but what was the ultimate motivation to go there? Yeah, I've been, that's my fourth time in Thailand. I've been there before, so, um, and then I trained with my friend Dor Dorian Price. You know, he has a lot of experience, um, very very good striking coach, and I trained at the Fairtex Training Center, and it, it was just an amazing, amazing trip. Yeah. Do you think that's something you're going to continue doing probably throughout your career? Well, like I said, I've been there four times. It, it really just depends um, uh, on the situation, the opponent, and everything is how I always evaluate that. And what uh, ultimately – you know, uh, made you want to want to go up to Walter Wade? Um, realistically, it was, um, you know, the losses, um, the fact that I wasn't ranked anymore. If I was still ranked, I would I would have stayed at lightweight. When you're not ranked anymore, it's kind of, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose, especially when lightweight is so hard to get ranked at. It's such a hard uh, division to, to get ranked at. So I just, um, I felt like it was time, you know. Yeah. Do you think if you still would have been ranked, you, you would have stayed at lightweight? Because, I mean, you mentioned how you always made it the weight. And for sure. For yeah. sure. If I was still ranked in the top 15, I, of, of course I would. And you talked about staying at lightweight because you were ranked already, but uh, Walter Wade is just as deep as lightweight, so do you feel like that might be a little bit hard to make that ranking or kind of climb up there? I don't think it's as deep. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, there's guys there. I mean, there's guys that have won six, seven fights in a row that still aren't even ranked in the top 15 at lightweight. Um, Gilbert Burns just moved up, and he won two fights in a row, and now he's ranked in the top 15 after two fights, and he wasn't ranked in the top 15 at lightweight, or he was barely ranked, you know what I'm saying? So I don't think it's as deep. I don't um, – uh, I mean, it's definitely hard once you get up there. Obviously, everybody's good in, the, in any division in the UFC, but I don't, I don't believe it's as deep. So are there any specific names that you've been looking at? Because obviously, if you think that it's not too deep, that means you feel like you – Whoever they give you, so have you looked at any names specifically? I've been looking at Nico Price. Um, <laughs> I, 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 my, my, my career is depending on, on Saturday night, and I, I'm not delusional about that. And um, I got to win this fight. You just uh, got bumped to the main card from the prelims. Um, you're now in that third from the top spot. Um, okay, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> um, does that you know show a sign of? respect for you guys for the UFC or what um, they kind of think about this fight? Just exciting, you know. I mean, uh, uh, I was a little shocked that, that, that we um, we were on the prelims to begin with, but I don't really care. I mean, I'm get, I know a lot of people like, oh, you're on the prelims now. Like, I, like I care. I'm getting paid the same regardless. My, my contract is my contract. So it really doesn't matter to me. Um, uh, as far as um, the main card, yeah, it's, it's always good to be on the main card, but is, if I'm making the same money, it doesn't matter to me. And I know that we're exciting. You know, we're both – we, I've never seen him be in a boring fight, and I've never been in a boring fight, so I feel like that always is going give, to give me a good chance to get a top spot on a card. Yeah, and um, you'll be fighting about like two hours later now, though. Does that impact anything? I mean, I'm used to fighting late, late, late at night, you know, so I haven't been on the – well, I've been on the prelims in the last couple of years when I fought Joe Duffy. Um, um, that was a prelim card um, a couple of years ago, but um, I was still – uh, at the end of the prelims, so close to the main card as well. Anyway, so it doesn't change nothing. And is is that really how you feel? Like if you lose this one, that could potentially be your job here in the UFC. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean that's not up to me, obviously. But yeah. um, uh, uh, I mean, I've lost three in a row now. I mean, losing a fourth is not is not an option in my mind, you know. And I'm not treating it as such. And in your mind, by moving up a weight class, yeah. I mean, it's still the same company you're fighting for, obviously, same career. But is it in a way like? mentally like you're hitting like the reset button and just starting clean does it's a, well it's a good way to to because you know so many guys lose and use the weight cut as the excuse so it's a good way yeah. to so-called reinvent yourself you know what i mean because everyone you tries to use that that gimmick you know so um for, for me you know it's it was just about not being ranked anymore if i'm not ranked then i might as well move up and i could i could win probably less fights and get ranked in the top 15 than if i stayed at lightweights um uh so uh 
that's all it was for me, basically, was just, just not being ranked anymore. Yeah. And uh, just curious, how, how, did, how do you feel training uh, for a World Tour fight? Do, do you feel any different or like any stronger? I don't feel is the any same different. Thing? I feel the exact same. Um, the, things, the, the things I focused on are technical. Just like, I mean, the th reason why I've lost these fights, if you look at the last three guys I fought, I mean, first of all, they're all ranked now in the top seven or eight in the world. Yeah. Like, they're all killers. And um, I got beat with technical issues, dropping my hands, keeping my chin in there. And these are things that I've focused, um, you know, almost religiously to address. Like I've, you know, I've, I've addressed these things as best I can and I feel like I've made major progress and I definitely feel like I, I you know, I could be a top fighter in the world. I mean, just two fights ago, I had a razor thin decision loss yeah. to Felder and he's ranked number six in the world now. So, um, uh, I mean, I think it's, it's just a matter of, of, of keeping my hands up, my chin down. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, before the, the losing streak, you were, you know, rising up the rankings and, and you were making some noise. Um, th that's how you feel. You feel like it came down to, to technique and, and you have to fix certain holes? A hundred percent. These are technical flaws that I've had my whole career, but only until recently have anybody ever been able to capitalize on them. I mean, I, I, I lost both those fights by dropping my, you know, last fight I got caught by Joe, uh, Dan Hooker. I'm, uh, uh, I'm throwing a left hook in the middle of the, uh, the cage with with this hand up and this I mean this hand down and my chin straight up in there. It's just yeah. it's a technical issue that needed to be addressed and I'm uh, I've did the best I can and you know we added some new things and did the best I can to fix this problem and I feel like it, it's it's been fi fixed as fast yeah. as possible. Um, obviously, this is something you've recognized, which is good. You, you, you're aware of it. Um, in a way, are you kind of glad you're fighting someone like Nico Price? That you know we know that he's a striker and likes to strike. So. Um, yeah, I think yeah, and I think honestly, I, he he is a striker, but I think he's I think he's a grappler as well. I think he's a yeah. grappler first, to be honest with you. And yeah. I think that he's going to look for a big bomb, and he's going to look for an overhand or a left hook, big loop and shot. And if he can't land it, I think he's going to try to grapple me. A hundred percent, I believe that. And um, uh, I think that um, it's a good matchup for me because he's you know. Um, he, he's been, you know, a lot of people I know I'm the underdog in this fight, but he's been knocked out two out of his last three fights also. So in my mind, we're on level playing field. Yeah. And um, I spoke to Sergio Pettis uh, recently, and he was a bit on, uh, uh, in a bit of a skid. And he said, you know, he, he underwent some, some dark times through that. Um, I, w I wonder if, you know, you had anything similar uh, with your skid, and, and if so, uh, how did you manage to, like, for sure, for sure. I've had, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into detail yeah. about some of the stuff. I've had some personal issues. I had one of my best friends die a couple months ago. I've had, you know, I've had, a, I, I'll talk about this after I win on Saturday night. Thank you, James. Thank you.